What's up guys, today I'm showing you easy text masking techniques that I use in Adobe Premiere Pro when I'm animating my text. Let's dive in. I've got my text layer. I know exactly where it's already going to be placed. That's really important. Once you kind of make your crop, it's best if you already have all your text placed where you want them in the video before you go ahead and crop them. So we'll go ahead and go to the effects controls, find our text layer here, and we'll scroll down. You can see here that it has its own masking settings. You can find mask settings for this layer here. You can also find it here. They act the same except for the fact that this layer up here is specifically going to put a cropping mask around this layer. So say you had another piece of text here. Let's say, happy Thursday. I'm tired, great. Now I'm going to have two layers of text. And if I were to come down here to the general video opacity mask, and let's draw a mask around it. This would be great if I needed to mask out everything and have an effect, maybe say it comes up and then it waits for a second and then it comes up. Great, that could work, but we're not gonna do that. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna undo everything. We're gonna undo this mask versus if I make a separate mask here, this I'm tired layer, let's go to position. It's not gonna have any limitations. It can still go wherever it wants. So it depends on how you're going about your workflow, but that's just important to know that while both masks will act the same, if you have multiple layers within your graphic layer, it's going to change the game a little bit. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so spoiler alert, you already kind of see what I'm going to do. So I'm going to use the pen tool and I'm going to draw a mask around. You can, if I undid that, you can just use this, oh great, like a square. I'm just going to draw a square. That's fine. It's just that I find that even though this square was made up for me, I still have to now pull all the points where I need them. And depending on the severity of the mask, it may be doing more work than just if I was drawing it myself. So I'm one to just draw my own. And then I can just get as close as I need to, to the text or to whatever I'm masking. And so now if I scroll down here to transform, if I make, first of all, make sure this is on. Let's make two keyframes. Let's make this one easy ease. And we'll have the come up like that. We'll slow. <laughs> okay, that works. That's the basics of text reveal using masking. That's about as good as it gets. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a couple different examples of when you would need to animate that mask and the difference between normal mask and an inverted mask. Okay, so I went ahead and made, I'm going ahead and making a little graphic. Is that how you spell lemony? Sure. We're gonna put it behind this lemon here. It completely surrounds it temporarily. This is where it would start in theory. And as it comes up, it will reveal the text. Okay, so we'll go into our text layer again, and we're going to, you know, it's so funny. Sometimes I like to start right in the middle, but we'll start, we'll start right whenever it's revealed, right about there, that's fine. Okay, we'll make sure our keyframe is on, and maybe we'll go to the very end, so everything is covered up, and we just want that mask to be, let's zoom in a little bit. Now, the difference here is that we are gonna need to do a lot of shaping. So I'll maybe go halfway and we're gonna need to do a lot of finessing. So one great thing with Premiere that they do have is they have these anchors here attached to any point that you make. It will automatically make these bars and that will really help to add a great curve to help finesse your mask. And um, another thing to keep in mind too, this looks fine on mine, but you may want to also adjust the feathering. I wouldn't adjust it too much. I think like that's gonna make things harder for you. But if you make it too little, it might not blend properly. So we're gonna make just a little mask, that's fine. 10 is fine, you know what, we'll go five, that should be good. 
Okay, so it's looking good here. And I like to do it this way because you don't wanna do too much work for yourself. You may not need to do a keyframe every frame. I feel like that's a lot of work on yourself when it's just like, I would, that's why I like to go the beginning, the end, do one in the middle, and then kind of like cut it from there. Like now I'm gonna cut it right here, then I'm gonna cut it right here, you know? So just do yourself a favor and don't do one every frame, especially if you end up having to adjust something on it, it's just gonna make your life a pain in the butt. So we just wanna make sure that mostly it's lining up properly. Let's go right here, that looks good. Love that. Okay, let's see how that looks. Definitely can see the why. But see, you know, it's like you gotta finesse from there. It's like, I wouldn't focus so closely on each and every frame. I would do, you know, do a few frames. How many is this? Less than 10 frames. See how that looks. You may not need to do any more. And if you do too many, then it may end up looking weird or jittery. So just keep that in mind. Okay, I think that's looking really sharp. Let's look at it from far away. Very cute. Great, so that is how you animate a mask. I'm gonna go ahead and make one more example because I do wanna show you what it would be like if you had an inverted mask. And all inverted means is that outside of the mask you can see and inside the mask you cannot see. So let's see what that looks like. I'm really setting myself up for, for a disaster here because this is a moving clip, but we're gonna see what I can do. Okay, so this time, I'm gonna have this text come out behind the road. So really, I only need to worry about where the road is and then where exactly the text is going to come out. All right, so I've got the mask all set up on this inverted one, and this works specifically well if your text is kind of coming out of something you, now I know where it's coming out of, so I need it to be invisible within the mask and then come out of it. Um, and you can kind of like test this out for yourself. Sometimes you have to fudge with it a little bit. But so this is going to be our starting point. And then by the end, maybe not that slow, by the end, it will come out. Now the only thing is, is with this, is that the shot is moving a little bit. So I'm just going to make sure that it's kind of lining up right at the road. Yeah, I really don't need to do too much animating. I thought it would kind of take longer than that because the shot's kind of turning. But in the case that you needed to, obviously, um, you can, you can, you actually can just rotate your mask if I needed to, but I really didn't need to. Okay, but that's the difference between an inverted mask and a regular mask. Since you made it this far into the video, why don't you just go ahead and hit the like down there and comment below if you've got other techniques on how you like to mask text or other objects in the frame. And let me know what else you'd like to learn as part of my Premiere Pro basic tutorials. I will catch you guys in the next video. Be sure to have a good one.